promises of the past. Yeah, Duncan, Iverson, Shaq. Hopes for the future. Milicek, Anthony, LeBron. 1,000 chances. 13 teams on the line. One question driving them all beyond anticipation. What if the 2003 NBA Draft Lottery? It is a special draft lottery edition of the GMC Shootaround on ABC. We come to you tonight from the NBA TV studio in Secaucus, New Jersey, site of the 19th annual NBA Draft Lottery. Good evening, everyone. Mike Tirico, a big night of the NBA on ABC, and we're glad you're with us. At the bottom of the hour, we'll take you just a couple of miles from here to Continental Airlines Arena, where it is game three of the best of seven Eastern Conference Finals. The number one overall pick from three years ago, New Jersey's Kenyon Martin. Such a big game in game two. He and all-star teammate Jason Kidd return home. Jason walks in with his son TJ. They're going to try to walk out with a 3-0 series lead over NBA Defensive Player of the Year Ben Wallace and the Detroit Pistons. The Eastern Conference Finals on ABC continuing at the bottom of the hour. First, as mentioned, the draft lottery to determine the order of the actual draft which you're going to see on ESPN next month, June 26th. It takes place just across the river from here at Madison Square Garden. This draft lottery was created almost two decades ago to ensure that teams wouldn't try to have the worst regular season record, thus the next year's number one draft pick. Now, in some years, there's no goal for that because there's no clear-cut number one pick. But this year, there is a consensus. LeBron James. Some say he's the best high school basketball player ever. You can't quantify that. But as we see James, within the last 45 minutes, arriving at a party at a hotel in his hometown of Akron, Ohio, we can say no high school athlete has ever been as celebrated as LeBron James. I'm joined by Sean Elliott, former NBA star, former college star Jay Billis. They join us on ABC and ESPN for analysis of those sports. Guys, earlier today, LeBron James signed a 90 million dollar endorsement contract for sneakers needless to say they're counting on him for a lot all the way around what kind of an impact can this young man make on the nba well when you give a guy a hundred million dollars before he's even played his first nba game you're asking this guy to transcend sports he's got to be a franchise rejuvenator he's got to re energize his teammates and its fan base and he's got to suck in people that weren't necessarily basketball fans before it's a huge responsibility, but so far, LeBron James has proved that he's up to the task. And he's up to the task on the court as well. LeBron James is a superior athletic talent. At 6'7", he is a man already, 235 pounds. He's the best high school player I've ever seen, and certainly in the last 20 years. He is just as skilled as Kobe Bryant at this age, but he is far more physically imposing, an outstanding passer. He has a unique vision of the court. He can deliver the ball, and he's got an explosive first step. He takes it to the basket to dunk. The only thing he needs to do is refine that shot, but he does shoot a good ball. I think that's something he will get on the NBA level. A lot of pressure ahead, but also a lot of pressure behind him. He's experienced so much. You know, there's higher intrigue in this draft lottery this year, guys, because there are three players that in any year by themselves, they would easily command the top pick. Why don't we start with one of them, Syracuse's Carmelo Anthony, who helped as a freshman lead the Orangemen to college basketball's national championship. Yeah, and what I really love about Carmelo is the way that he performed on one of the grandest stages in the NCAA tournament. This guy was dominant. He reminds me a lot of big dog Glenn Robinson, the way he scores the basketball. But you add on top of that his passing ability, his athletic ability to make everybody else around him better, and he's a positive for any team in this league. Carmelo's holding the pillow wearing the black shirt there in his home in Baltimore, Maryland, anxiously watching it with the rest of us where his future home will be. Well, Jay, there's another person uh, getting great grades, a seven-footer out of Yugoslavia, and once again, a teenager. We speak of Darko Milicic. Darko Milicic is an intriguing prospect because he's seven foot tall, he's a left-hander, and he is long and very skilled, perhaps the most skilled big man in this year's draft. Just 17 years old. He's got great length, very clever in the post. He's got a variety of different moves. He can shoot the ball, and he's at Athletic. He can get up and down the floor. And when you talk about the combination of size and skill, Darko Milicic has a chance to be great. That makes him very intriguing as perhaps the second pick in the draft. Darko seated in the middle there. He's come to the U.S. to become acclimated with America and work on his game as well. As he watches at his agent's home, let's go through for Darko and everybody else watching the specifics, the procedures for the 2003 NBA draft lottery. Tonight's lottery involves the 13 teams that did not make the
the NBA playoffs this year. And the lottery is weighted so that the team with the poorest record have the best chance of securing one of the top three picks. 13 teams draw tonight for the top three spots only. The 10 teams not in the top three have their draft order based on regular season records. And the probabilities thus have the Denver Nuggets and Cleveland Cavaliers with the highest chance of getting the top pick. Now, trades over the last couple of years have added these permutations, and they are significant. Memphis's own pick, if not drawn number one, goes to Detroit. But Grizzlies also own the Houston Rockets pick, and with it, Houston's five lottery chances. If Atlanta's pick is not in the top three, it goes to the Milwaukee Bucks. Amazingly, over the last dozen years, the team with the greatest chance of winning the lottery has not won the top overall pick. I'm joined now by NBA Commissioner David Stern. Uh, it's an exciting time because we haven't seen a big three with this kind of hype before they've gotten into the NBA all coming into the same draft. But the draft is still uh, such a life cycle event that it's gotten bigger and bigger, whether there are one or two. And frankly, this year's Rookie of the Year, Amari Stoudemire was number nine. Mm -hmm. So this is a draft of opportunity. When we see three young men who are highly touted and we're being talked about as being one, two, and three in the draft, 90 million sneaker endorsement for LeBron James, it's great for the kids, but there's also pressure on them because they're, they're not 21 yet. They're not old enough to do a lot of things. How does the NBA try to help those players handle the pressures that they're about to face? Our player programs has undergone a fundamental reevaluation. Uh, number one, our teams have player programs directors. We have additional sort of life skill courses, certificate programs, uh, college credit programs, you name it, together with all the counseling that we can possibly put together to make the transition as easy as possible. Quickly, there's been talk of an age limit somewhere down the line. Is it good for the NBA to have three teenagers potentially going as the one, two, and three picks? No, I, I think it would be better if we had uh, a 20-year-old limit, but, but I must say that when one looks at uh, ice skating, gymnastics and the like, tennis. There are plenty of teenagers. So we're going to deal with the uh, hand that has been dealt to us, and we're going to do the best with these very talented and, and relatively, I would say, mature young men, and we're going to do the best that we possibly can do to help them through this. But if, if we could, I think, uh, have a 20-year-old entry, it would send a better message to America and the world. We look forward to tonight. Thank you, Commissioner. Good to see you. Thank you. And we'll enjoy the great playoffs that have been going on a little bit later on here on ABC. As we continue on this special draft lottery edition of the GMC Shootaround, we will look not just at the top big three of the 2003 draft, but the other players. If your team doesn't end up one through three, there are still some good players who might be able to help your NBA team next year. And we will reveal the teams that didn't make the top three. Selections 13 through four coming up as we continue from the NBA TV studios in New Jersey. A reminder Reminder, you can log on to NBA.com, and we want to know who you think will be the number one overall pick in the draft. Do you agree with the consensus that it will be LeBron James? In the interim, our friends at SportsCenter have this look, a little tongue-in-cheek, at the NBA draft lottery. That is way in there, man. Don't worry about it. I got it. Yes, sir. Nice. Eleven seventeen. GMC NBA Shoot Around Special Edition on ABC. Brought to you by GMC. We are professional grade. Back at the NBA TV studios in New Jersey, a special edition of the GMC Shootaround. 2003 draft lottery, and right after us, game three of the Eastern Conference Finals. New Jersey trying to go three up on Detroit. Now, the actual drawing has just taken place and been conducted in a separate room. Joel Litvin, the executive vice president of the NBA, was the one supervising this draw in a separate room. A representative from each team was present, as were members of the national media, all there to observe the process. And no one out here in the studio knows the outcome except for Mark Manoff, a partner in the accounting firm of Ernst & Young. He's now delivering the 13 sealed envelopes to the stage, ensuring the integrity of the proceedings, NBA Vice President of Security, Bernard Tolbert. The NBA teams are represented by players or front office personnel. Let's introduce you to them. Starting on the top row with Seattle General Manager Rick Sund. Golden State Warrior forward, fourth overall pick in 1998, Antoine Jameson. A first-round pick last year, Washington Wizard guard Juan Dixon. 
the 11th pick of the 93 draft. Wow, 10 years ago you were drafted? Alan Houston, <laughs> guard of the New York Knicks. Did you bring any good luck charms across the river? Uh, Dave DeBuscher fan. That's right. Dave DeBuscher, one of the great Knicks of all time. Nick general manager when Patrick Ewing was the lottery choice. Uh, Dave passed away, as many of you know, last week. Atlanta Hawks general manager Billy Knight, representing the Chicago Bulls, special assistant B.J. Armstrong. Now down to the front row, Memphis Grizzlies president, top 50 all-time NBA player Jerry West. What did you bring from Memphis for good luck, Jerry? We didn't dare bring the lucky goat from Memphis by the name of Maynard, so uh, <laughs> we went to visit him yesterday. We're supposed to get the number one pick by visiting, uh, by visiting him yesterday, so we're happy we're here without him. Uh, the spirit of Maynard the goat makes the trip to New York. <laughs> Next to Jerry, another NBA great, a Clipper vice president of basketball operations, Elgin Baylor. Miami Heat all-rookie performer Karan Butler. Next to Karan, Toronto Raptors all-star, fifth overall selection in the 98 draft. What did Vince Carter bring through customs from Toronto? Maple Leaf. Maple Leaf, represent the home <laughs> country. Denver Nuggets owner Stan Kroenke is next to Vince. And representing the Cleveland Cavaliers, owner Gordon Gunn. To unveil picks 13 through 4, here's NBA Deputy Commissioner Russ Granick. Thanks, Mike, and welcome everybody to the 2003 NBA Draft Lottery. I want to wish the best of luck to all the participants. And now let's get right to the results. The 13th pick goes to the Memphis Grizzlies. That's the pick from Houston, not their own selection. The 12th pick goes to The Seattle Supersonics. The 11th pick goes to the Golden State Warriors. So far, the numbers have worked out. No one has moved up. The 10th pick goes to the Washington Wizards. In their expected spot. The ninth pick goes to the New York Knicks. So no repeat of draft lottery hopes for New York fans. The eighth pick goes to the Atlanta Hawks. That pick now goes to the Milwaukee Bucks because of an earlier trade. The seventh pick goes to the Chicago Bulls. Right in order, no one has moved up to this point. The sixth pick goes to the Los Angeles Clippers. That means Memphis has moved up. They can only get number one. If it's two or three, it goes to Detroit. The fifth pick goes to the Miami Heat. That is right in their spot. And the fourth pick goes to the Toronto Raptors. Which is in their spot as well. So the intrigue, maybe Maynard the Goat was the lucky charm for Jerry West. <laughs> Memphis is in one of the most interesting few minutes that you can go through for a franchise. Memphis, since they moved up to the top three, and if we remind you from earlier, they hold on to the pick if it's number one from an earlier trade for Otis Thorpe several years ago. If it's two or three, it goes to Detroit. So the Pistons front office is watching in a back room at the Meadowlands, very nervous right now. But we've got a lot of viewers in Chicago, Atlanta, New York, Washington, out in San Francisco, you Warrior fans. They want to know, we didn't get the chance to get Carmelo or Darko or LeBron. Are there other good players in this 2003 draft? No, oh, absolutely. There's two big men in particular that have a chance to move up into the top five or top six players in the draft. When you talk about Chris Bosh, from Georgia Tech, the freshman, six foot 10, 220 pounds or so, can play inside and can go outside, shoot that ball with 18 or 19 foot range. This is a young man who's going to fill out a little bit more. He has athletic ability. Chris Kamen, a junior out of Central Michigan, can play around the basket, plays with both hands, lefty, righty. 
a true seven footer. Both these guys are going to have to get much bigger and stronger to have a real impact. From the guard spot, point guard TJ Ford, great in transition, an outstanding passer. The question marks his size and shooting ability. Dwayne Wade of Marquette, a great first step, explosive getting to the basket, an outstanding defender, gets his hands on a lot of basketballs, a lot of deflection. Kirk Heinrich, I love this kid. He can play the point or the off guard position, shoot the ball. He really attacks in transition. And Reese Gaines, 6'6", six, six, he plays the point or the two guard, and he is long and very athletic on the defensive end. Gets his hands on a lot of basketballs, a lot of deflections. He can really get out and guard people. I like Reese Gaines. He could be a lottery pick. And we have several international players. Could have a dozen in the first round as well. So names you might not know now, you might know come this time next year. Recapping picks 4 through 13. They go in order, and once again, because Atlanta is not in the top three, their pick at number eight goes to Milwaukee. It will be Memphis, Denver, Cleveland, or perhaps Detroit. The happy people coming up here in a little bit. The GMC shoot-around. This special NBA lottery edition continues, and we'll find out who will get the number one pick in the 2003 NBA draft, the draft of the big three in 03. That plus Eastern Conference Finals Game 3 as we continue on ABC. Back on the GMC Shootaround Special NBA Draft Lottery Edition. Memphis, Denver, or Cleveland? One of those teams will get the top three picks. And it's an odd situation again. Jerry West, if your Memphis team gets the number one pick, you've got the obvious dream of this draft. But if you end up two or three, you don't get any pick. It's got to be a very interesting few moments here of waiting. Well, you know, in, in this league, uh, a lot of times people get drafted very high, and uh, sometimes they don't play very well. And uh, we're hopeful that uh, this will be the year that we get a number one pick because in a city like Memphis, one of the things we feel we really need is a star who can get people to look at this team in a little bit different manner and also try to build a team that's uh, for the city and, more importantly, will represent the best of the NBA. Mm -hmm. Well, Stan and Gordon Gund watch as well with great interest, and so do the young men back in uh, their respective areas. Carmelo Anthony in his Baltimore home, nervous about where he might be going, and Darko Milicic in his agent's office in New York City. As they watch, let's go to Russ Granick, the Deputy Commissioner of the NBA. Okay, thanks again, Mike. Now let's find out the real big winners tonight. The third pick goes to the Denver Nuggets means Cleveland or Memphis get number one. The second pick goes to the Memphis Grizzlies. And that means that the first pick in the 2003 NBA draft goes to the Cleveland Cavaliers. Congratulations, Gordon. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, we <laughs> yeah, the odds that it worked. Yeah. That's great. That's great. That's great. That's just terrific. Thank you. Uh, a couple of very different stories working here, Mr. Gunn. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank you. With LeBron James being from Akron, Ohio, I'm sure there has to be a lot of excitement in the organization. You know, we don't know who we're going to pick yet. <laughs> But at least there's somebody who you can just drive over and check out oh, if you'd I'll like, you, right? Yes, I, I'm very glad about that. I'm, I'm very excited for the fans in Cleveland. This is a great day for them and for all of, uh, all of that market, for Akron, Cleveland, all of Northeastern Ohio. Tremendously excited about it. A big day in Cleveland sports. Well, congratulations, Mr. Gund, and Thank we wish you guys the best of luck. Gordon Thank Gund, you, the owner of the Cleveland Cavaliers, and that Memphis pick now goes to the Detroit Pistons. So Detroit ends up a big winner here as well as they get the number two overall selection in the 2003 NBA draft. Back to wrap it up and get you ready for game three of the Eastern Conference Finals. Nets and Pistons coming up next on ABC. First, the GMC professional grade plays of the week.